Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about concurrency. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, how useful do you think it is to know multi-threading con and concurrency as a junior software developer? As I found it to be quite difficult to learn, especially for people like me who don't get the chance to use it at work. From my understanding, that kind of optimization is really the thing we need for small applications. Will I ever need to be good at multi multi-threading and concurrency at all? Well, uh, this is a little bit tricky for me to answer because a big part of me wants to say yes, because I think it's it it it, it it's extremely important for you to understand at the very least the basics. That's what I argue. The reason why I say that you should understand the basics is because you need to understand how the computer works. You need to understand how different cores work. Like what, what's, why do we have multiple cores? What's, uh, wh wh why, is, uh, why is it that we say that say something like JavaScript or Node and so forth that's single-threaded and then you have multi-threaded languages and concurrency. Like what, how, does the, how do these conceptual things actually operate. A good example I think is to think about promises in JavaScript. How does a promise actually work? Why does it work the way it does? Uh, now I'm not gonna say that you go and l learn about the event loop. I'm just saying that something that is asynchronous work versus synchronous. These things you might never be at the stage where you yourself you sit down and say hey you know what I'm going to build this thing and I could really use the extra well the ex I, I, need, I can I can optimize this in some fashion and then you implement your own multi-threading strategy that may never be you uh, but you're certainly going to be benefited and in many in some cases you actually have libraries or you have other things that you're using other tools that will make more sense if you understand at the very least at a high level what these things mean. So I don't think that it should be your first pit stop as a junior developer to learn about multi-threading. That's not, it's not the most important thing. But I think that you should spend at least an hour or two, a few hours to learn, uh, to read articles, read up a little bit about what these concepts are. You don't have to be a master of this stuff, but you should be able to comprehend what it is about, because it will help you understand other things that you're using. Now, there are examples where, at least I think this is very telling. I remember having a conversation with, uh, this is actually, you can I still have this video, where I try to explain why we don't, why uh, if monads are useful or something like that. It's, uh, I'm even in the bathtub back, in, the, back in, the, in those days. And I basically explain that uh, the reason why monads or why we don't learn about monads uh, as software developers is because nobody uses them. And I think even the first comment there in response is that someone laughs in my face and says, Frederick, so you're saying that nobody uses promises. And I think that my response is, I am making a difference here between understanding something at the conceptual level, actually deliberately knowing what I'm doing with that thing and understanding the construct. If I asked a JavaScript developer, as an example, what's your favorite functor? Also that they wouldn't know what I was talking about. I'll, the same thing if I asked you what's your favorite monad, uh, monadic structure in JavaScript, very few people would under know what I'm talking about. But if I say what, how, like, uh, how do you like promises, and they would, most of them at the very least would know what a promise was, because they've and th that's the thing they've learned what the promise is, and that's just a, it, it is it is a monadic structure. But you don't have to know the uh, like the theory behind monadic structures to understand how to consume a promise. But what you do need to know is its behavior in the code that you write. How do you consume this interface? How do you use this this thing that we call a promise? And that's the same level of understanding I think that you should have for concurrency and, and multi-threading. If you just understand 
in what situations these things are useful and kind of how they work. You don't have to uh, even, okay, it's not that common as you were saying yourself, it's not super common that you use it in your own code. I have on a few occasions and there are many different libraries and other situations where these things occur. And I think that you should look at it as just a tool, another tool in your tool belt. And as I like to say, some tools, uh, when you're learning how to write software, or like when you have any type of tool, they are tools that you use every day. They are hammers, there are nails, etc., etc., things that you use all the time. And those tools, they get used a lot. But then there are tools that are not so common, like multi-threading and concurrency. It might not be the most common thing, but it is still a useful tool to have because when you face a situation where you at the very least need to understand the concept because you're using some other tool that is leveraging something like multi-threading, well then that tool becomes much more comprehensible to you and when you get more advanced and further down your further in your career you might find that there are situations where you have a problem and then you just have this thought, hey you know what this problem sort of fits this thing that I read about multi-threading and concurrency or something like that Maybe I can look in a little bit further and further my understanding of these concepts and see if I can actually apply it and then you can take it from there. That doesn't mean that you have to master it on day one as a junior developer. Just treat it as, as I said, a tool that you could call upon once if you need it. So what I want you to take away from this is that no, I don't think that you have to feel and I think that this is a fundamental uh, this is a fundamental worry in every single junior software developer and I understand it I'm, and I'm trying to help guide you in the right direction here. Guys, there are so many things in software development that you are going to be completely clueless about. There are so many things in software development that I am completely clueless with uh, about. Like There are so many things and I've said this on multiple occasions before guys, you will not learn it all. Just accept it. You can, you can you can be as as passionate as you as anybody and you will still not learn it all except that that is part of being a software developer being humble enough to realize that even if you spend the rest of your life learning everything that there is possibly to know by the time you get to the end and it's time for you to retire the information that you have to learn is going to quadruple because it's an expanding field you're not going to learn it all however I think it is very good for you to look at something like multi-threading or concurrency as something that is just a tool, it's just something that could be useful. So learn the high level concepts around the thing, Don't you don't have to be a master, just know sort of how it works. And then just as with monads or whatever, it's something that you sort of understand how it works and usually the way you interact with these things is through some library or some abstraction somebody else created and now that abstraction becomes much more comprehensible to you to consume because you understand some of the underlying theories as to how this thing works and in some cases you might find that hey you know what I might have to go ha go have to go back and read up on this thing because now I'm in that specific situation where this thing might actually be kind of useful. Have a great day.